Hi, Tom. Good afternoon, <laughs> Greg Roberts. This is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the final day of qualifications. An hour and a half to go, and still one spot in the field remains. 32 cars have qualified. That means 12 cars have qualified today, including a brilliant 200-mile-an-hour lap by A.J. Foyt. No troubles there, but lots of troubles, and you've got to report on them, Craig. Right. We've had uh, three or four cars that got into some problems, the latest being Dick Simon about 15 minutes ago. The yellow light is still on. Dick got into some trouble in four, hit the wall, then rode the inside of the wall all the way down to the start-finish line, <laughs> and he had one tire uh, following him coming down the line. Dick was okay. We might mention he was shaking down car number 27 that was to be driven by Bill Pewterbaugh. Dick having qualified nicely yesterday in car 17 in the 11th spot. There is Dick climbing out of the car right now. You know, that's a long, long ride, and there's the wheel following him down. Uh, he lost actually a couple of wheels and uh, dumped a lot of uh, debris from the engine all up and down the, the north half of the straightaway. He took quite a blow off that wall. That was obvious as the car eventually was towed back into the garage area and washed that one for qualifications for 1978. But Dick Simon is okay. I imagine his feelings hurt just a little bit. But Simon is in car number 17 and will start in the 11th position. He was just helping out a buddy. He's one of our better test pilots at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Janet Guthrie can attest to that. We had some other driver changes. We might mention that Mike Mosley got in car number 78, the Alex Food Special that was driven yesterday or all month actually by Bobby Olivero and Mike qualified that car. And there's talk that uh, Bill Vukovic may be changing. The uh, 92, 93 cars are all out of engines. Al Aquasto had taken over for Gary Irvin in that car. They ran 186 in practice and broke the engine. So, uh, we're still waiting for the track to be cleared. We hear a lot of cheering back there, and I suspect Larry Cannon may be getting himself back together. He got in trouble and hit the sure wall. Sure did. And uh, we'll be showing you that. Also, we might mention Bob Harkey in car 42. This was earlier in the day. We're going to take a look at Bob Harkey getting in, and Tom, you were here when that happened. Yes, um, he's in car number 42. He was not getting up to any qualification speeds. He did take a lap, and then he did a 180-degree spin. He didn't hit anything. Bob's a veteran here at Indianapolis. I'm not saying just because he is a veteran that he could uh, he, that avoids hitting the wall but there you see uh, going into a spin and of course no real damage to in a situation like that just a matter of maybe putting some flat spots on the tires then getting back out and Bob Hartke of Indianapolis Indiana yeah, has been back that. on the uh, practice uh, on the track for practice but right now I'm sort of itching to see that Foyt run all over again let's do that the best run of the day today easily the best run of the day AJ Foyt 200.122 Let's look at car number 14 run. And he's on it. Boy, they held that green flag a long time. He was clear past him before they waved the green that time for Pat Vidan to throw the green at A.J. Foyt. Threw one very nicely, about six inches away from the wall through the south chute. Left uh, tires just under the line as he goes through the second corner. Onto the back stretch. Maybe a car and a half width away from the wall as he goes down the back stretch. A.J. Foyt sets up for the third turn. Might be expected is like running on rails when you watch him. A.J. Foyt in the north chute. Sets up for four. Gets down on the line with the left tires and he's on to the main straightaway. And here comes the defending champion of the Indianapolis 500. One lap complete. One lap complete for A.J. Foyt. Left tire is just under the line as he goes through one, about six inches away from the wall through the second turn. Left wheel is just under the line as he goes through two, and he's on to the back stretch. But two car widths off the wall. And here it is, over 200 miles an hour for A.J. Foyt. 44 and 8,200 seconds, speed 200.8. 8.03, A.J. Foyt. And he's on the main straightaway, and the green flag's still out from Pat Vidan. A.J. Foyt. Into the first turn, very nicely, the same line. Maybe eight inches off the wall as he went through the south chute that time, just down to the line once again with the left side as he goes on to the back stretch from the second corner. And again, over 200 miles an hour. 44 and 8,800 seconds speed, second lap. 
8.535 for the four-time winner. And he comes off of four onto the main straightaway. Pat Fidan with the white flag out, and A.J. Foyt with one lap remaining for his 1978 qualifying attempt. Completes this, it'll be 21 straight qualifications. Through the south end, the same identical line on all four laps. They have to vary the backstress just a little bit with the wind. And just over the 45 second mark, 45.01 seconds and the speed 199.956. Third lap, bring him to the checkered flag. And here comes A.J. Foyt off of four onto the main straightaway. Pat Vidan with the checkered flag. And A.J. Foyt is qualified. Well, it's all smiles here right now as A.J. climbs back in the car so the pictures can be taken. A.J., what a difference 24 hours makes. This speed yesterday, third spot, today, 21st. Well, we're in the race. I think yesterday, if things would have worked out, uh, that we would have qualified a little faster than we did today. But the biggest thing uh, the crew and myself wanted to do was make the race, so uh, we didn't extend ourselves. Uh, it was a little gusty, but uh, I'm glad to be qualified. Well, you know, this race has been won by drivers starting back farther than the 21st spot. Well, I've never won it that f from that far back, but it would sure be nice if I could. <laughs> okay. I think one year you started 23rd, didn't you? Yeah, and I didn't get no further than the first turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping for better things. We, we're hoping that all the foul-ups were yesterday and nothing more to face you. Well, it was really nobody's fault. I guess if it was anybody's fault, I'd have to blame myself. But uh, we was running good all week. And, you know, yesterday morning we run faster than anybody's ever been on the electric timer here, over 203.666 or something like that. So we were happy about that. But uh, all in all, I'd like to thank Goodyear and Vavilene and also uh, Schweitzer Turbo Division that built the blowers for my engine that we're running right now because they're based right here at Annapolis, and the, the blower seems to be functioning real, real well. So, and my fine sponsors, Jim and Di Gil. You happy with the laps you got just now? I mean, the 200? Well, considering the way the wind is blowing, and it's blowing the opposite direction, and it's been blowing all month, and I was having a conceivable lot of trouble in actually one and two and four. Uh, four is catching me very strong, where I was having to This is Craig Roberts back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and there's quite a crowd gathered around the car second in line right now and that's Jim Herdebees, the Mallard Roadster car 56. Yesterday Jim was refused a final sticker. Uh, they said he wasn't up to qualifying speed. They said that car wouldn't run 180 miles an hour and Jim of course says there is no such rule. It says you have to get up to a certain speed in order to qualify. He uh, may or may not have a court order which will allow him to actually try to qualify car number 56 and he has tried it and tried it time and time again so Herc is working on him pretty good down there and that's the reason for the big crowd. Before we go to a commercial break for our stations on the network quickly let me run over the cars that have qualified today. Al Laquasto at 185.624 he is the slowest in the field he is 32nd at this point we still have one more car needed to fill the field. Jerry Sneva car number 30 at 187.266 Salt Walther a nice ride 193.726 Jerry Carl the machinist Union Special, car number 88 at 187.549. Phil Threshy, the rookie, 187.520. Graham McCray driving the backup car, car 34, one of the Dayton Walther Specials, 186.964. Jim McElreath qualified at 188.058. Larry Cannon had a nice run the first lap over 190 miles an hour, and then he spun out. We'll be showing you that a little bit later, and hopefully Larry has got that car ready to go. Then A.J. at 200.122. His teammate, George Snyder, 192.627. Gary Bettenhausen is qualified at 187.324. Mike Mosley in car 78 replacing Bobby Oliveira, 188.719. Bob Harkey then went out, waved on the second lap, and then Pancho Carter, car number 8, the 32nd qualifier, 196.829. And you'll be seeing the run of the Budweiser car number 8, driven by Pancho Carter, coming up shortly. Let's go now to a commercial break. We'll be back with more action from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
If you really want to say something in the yellow pages, you need the right arrangement. To promote reliability, brand names and authorized service, the hours you're open, the completeness of your service, your location, and don't forget illustration and copy, because if you say the right things, your Yellow Pages ad can make some beautiful music. Say something to your composer, your Yellow Pages salesperson. When American Fletcher said, Ed, we want to be your bank, I said, you may say that when I have money, but what about when I need money? Well, they said they could give me a loan for just about anything I needed without a lot of hassle. Then they told me I was worth more money than I thought. And I said, American Fletcher, you want me? You got me. We want to be your bank. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner Johnny Rutherford. You can be a winner, too, when you play Burger Chef's exciting and challenging 500 Racing Facts game. Just buy any sandwich, fry, and drink combination, and you'll get a game card that will test your racing knowledge. Boy, I got a tough one. Hey, this is great! I just won! I've got the best one. Who won the 76 500? Be a winner. Play 500 Racing Facts only at Burger Chef. Now, True Value Hardware Stores offer a selection of beauty aids for your lawn to keep it looking its best. This weed eater needy trimmer edges, trims, mows, and sweeps a 16-inch path where the mower can't reach. The Black & Decker double-edged 16-inch hedge trimmer keeps shrubs and evergreens neatly trimmed. And this Rockwell Lawn Edger and Trimmer cuts a neat, narrow edge along walks and driveways. Beautify your lawn and garden with the help of quality name brand tools from participating True Value Hardware Store. We're Rock back once again. Right? <laughs> We're doing great coming into these things. The last time we started this, nobody said anything. Now we both go. Yeah. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Jim Hurtaby situation. I explained it a moment ago. He has put his car right in front of uh, the next qualifier, and that's Bob Hartke. Every car, in order to be on the track, uh, must have, first of all, uh, an inspection sticker, and that permits them to practice. Then they get their final inspection st uh, sticker, and that's based on safety and whether or not the machine can actually make racing speeds. And they've been timing Jim Herdebees and that old roadster that he calls it the Mallard uh, all month long. He's never gotten over 175 miles an hour, and they say a rookie has to pass tests at that. So they have not given him the final inspection sticker. Now, Herdebees at the moment is standing right in front of Car number 42 with Bob Hartke, who is the next car in line, and defying the USAC officials, that's Tom Benford, the chief steward, to move it. And he's waving, uh, what he is waving is not a court order, but actually the entry fee, or rather the entry blank, and defying them to show him where uh, it says that he has to run 180 miles an hour. That's the situation. It's unfortunate. Jim has brought a lot of uh, uh, criticism upon himself this year uh, uh, by bringing that car out again and trying to get into the field, and he's just not going to make it. And I, the USAC officials have refused to give him that second or final uh, sticker. And that's the situation right now. It's going to be a big story, obviously, and you're going to see it develop here this afternoon. They could actually bring a, a hook or, you know, a wrecker out and put a hook on it and pull it away. And then if he does that, I imagine there'll be a lawsuit from Mr. Herdebees. That's what he's threatening, at least. That's what he was threatening yesterday. Yeah, he was very upset about it yesterday, and uh, he pointed out to me the fact that, you you know, there's nothing that says that you have to run up a certain mm. speed. So that's that's his point of contention. Of course, the entry uh, blank that he has, the rules and so on, he's he's going over that with him right now. We mentioned to you earlier before that Larry Cannon had a nice ride going. Uh, Tom, the first lap was over 190 oh, miles beautiful, per hour. Beautiful. And then he ran into some trouble. Perhaps you might want to describe that. Well, it uh, happened after he turned to one lap, the uh, Corvette pace car is now leaving for an inspection of the track after the accident, which uh, you saw the uh, results of a moment ago involving Dick Simon. But uh, Larry Cannon uh, was out uh, earlier today in car number 85. That's my race car special. Had a lap of 190 miles an hour, and here he is going into turn four, and then you see the impact. And uh, then you'll see him crawling toward the pit area. Now, actually, the damage to that was more of a bruise than anything else. And uh, he's had the opportunity of uh, coming back out later this afternoon. Now, he is in line. Uh, you see Boom Boom Ken, and he, they were having a party in his honor in the infield at the very moment this happened. And I want to see Larry of Danville, Illinois, get into that line. 
and all the crowd noise that you might hear in the background is due to what this herd of let's get situation. A, uh, let's get a camera down there and see what's going on. They've brought uh, car number 42 around her to bees. That's the story. And brought him up here to qualify. Now, in line at the moment, car number 42 with Bob Hartke. Then behind him, Larry Rice. And then number 69, Joe Saldana. And uh, Jerry Carl just stopped by after delivering Bill Vukovic's helmet to him. And he says definitely Vukovic will be in number 18. And then Larry Cannon. So he'll be fifth out. Uh, 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 in car number 85. You saw him uh, tick the wall uh, just a while ago. He uh, never did go into a spin, was able to bring it in. But after 190 mile an hour lap, that's sure a disappointment to tick that wall. You know, uh, with about 50 minutes left, Tom, we usually have a situation where we say this is the man on the bubble, this is the guy they've got yes. to do. But we've only got 32 qualified right now, so there really mm -hmm. isn't anybody on the bubble. Al Aquasto obviously is slowest. He went out in car 92 for Gary Irvin and uh, and blew an engine. And the uh, Bill Finley crew doesn't have any more engines left. So uh, there's going to be some shuffling around. There's no question about that. This next uh, uh, minute, these minutes that we're going to be on our network television show should be very, very interesting. The Herd of Bees story is one. Who's going to be the 33rd qualifier? Will there be anybody bumped? All of those questions still remain to be answered. But you had a beautiful ride earlier today in Pancho Carter. I was so glad to see him. That's a very exciting story as far as I'm concerned after that terrible accident he had in yes. December. Let's pick up the run of Pancho Carter. I believe we'll see at least a couple of laps before we go back live here and also the interview with Pancho Carter. After recovering from those injuries at Phoenix, came back to win two back-to-back -back USAC sprint car races. Former midget champion and sprint champion in the number one turn. Up near the short straightaway wall, foot away from the wall, and into the number two corner. Virtually the same groove that he notched last time around, and he zips down the back straightaway. Three car widths off that back straightaway fence as he looks toward the northeast turn. 45 and 54 hundredths seconds, even faster. 197.628. Ancho Carter now off the number four turn. Checks with his pit crew as he races down the front straightaway. Pat Badan drops the white flag on Pancho Carter. Two and a half miles to drive this afternoon on a Sunday afternoon drive for Pancho. Up in the short chute. Now down into the number two turn. And off the corner. Heads down the straightaway. One and a quarter miles to go for Pancho. Two car widths off that straightaway wall. Here it is, 45 and 6,700 seconds over the 197 mile an hour mark, 197.066. Let's bring him to the checkered flag. And he's ready for that checker too as he wheels it off the number four turn and points it down the straightaway. The crew waves him on. There's the checkered flag from Pep Fredan. There's a lot of things to unbuckle here, but we can see uh, those eyes flashing and a very happy expression. Poncho being again congratulated by his crew. A very fine qualifying run, Poncho. A lot of differences would have made yesterday, and I know you were disappointed yesterday, but we came back strong today. Yeah, well, uh, we had some misfortunes yesterday with the car uh, not being able to get it started, and uh, we feel real good. We just want to go out and get four good laps today, and it looks as though we've done that, and I uh, really got to thank my crew for working hard this month to get this thing, uh, the car running real good, the Budweiser Lightning, and uh, making making it an easy month for me. Uh, they said that uh, I wouldn't be back here running this year, and I proved uh, a lot of doctors wrong, I think. Well, it's six We're back live now at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tom Carnegie has gone down to the start-finish line, and things are really heating up. With me, as usual, on our trackside and qualification shows, our racing expert, Tom Stevens. Second year in a row, he's won the pole. And uh, things are, uh, Herc is uh, stirring up some stuff. They just called for all the safety patrol members to move down into the area. And we had a report that when Bob Harkey's car was moved around Hurtavise's car, that Herc actually jumped in the cockpit of car 42. So uh, we can't really, from our standpoint right here or from our vantage point we really can't see but we're gonna have our camera down there and you'll be able to see something that's going on well one thing about her to be is he knows how to get his sponsors coverage <laughs> that's pretty much the story uh, all the cheering and everything you hear and uh, Tom Carnegie is explaining to the fans who are here at the track 
in the event you just joined us, we've had 12 qualifiers today. The best run of the day was A.J. Foyt, 200 plus, and he will start in 21st position. Uh, he is not too excited about starting that far back. He said he did start uh, further back on one occasion. That was 23rd and never made it past the first turn. So there's going to be some hard chargers in the back, but we still have to get that 33rd car in here. And after all the oil that Dick Simon laid down in the 27 car, it could really get tight this last hour, Tom. It really is. You know, I've got uh, a younger brother that's sitting, it looks like it's in 30th spot right now, and that's going to be uh, sort of a tough position to hold, but uh, we'll have to see what's happening. You know, they brought in a couple cars in on the hook here lately. The pressure's mounting, and uh, it's going to be interesting this last hour or so. As I mentioned, there have been three or four cars that had their problems. One of them was Cliff Husel, who also had some problems, if I recall correctly, in qualifications last year. Cliff in the car number 29, a Canadian, and he did definitely have a problem. You see him coming out of, I believe, turn four is where he had the problem. And uh, Cliff, uh, I, I don't know if, if four is really a problem today. Everybody's complained about the win and so on. But it seems like people are breaking loose uh, on four. Well, definitely, that's what seems to happen uh, as the track gets a little greasy. It looks like turn four, in my, you know, from my standpoint, is always the greasiest, and there's a, a little bit of a problem down there. Cliff's car is a former Johnny Rutherford car. It's, I'm not sure if it's the car he won here with, but it's one of the cars that uh, you know he used to run very quick with here at the Speedway. There was another guy who ran very well today. As a matter of fact, Salt Walther, if I'm not mistaken, the Penske boys went over and helped. That actually is a Penske Cosworth. Uh, and worked a little bit on the backup car. And uh, now we're, our cameras are switching back down, and you can see in the middle of all that, Jim Hurtabees. And as we have pointed out a couple of times, the reason he has not been given a final sticker to go out and make a qualification attempt, and they're telling him his car won't run over 175 miles an hour. And I'll be very honest, uh, I have never heard that before, that rule that you have to, uh, you have, to have a car that, that is capable. They told Jim he had to have a car that was capable of at least 180 miles an hour. Have you ever heard that before? I haven't, you know, but I'm not aware of the rules. I don't follow them that close a lot of times. And uh, so I'm not sure if you have to run 180 miles an hour to get that final sticker that uh, the, uh, the concern is about. The final sticker we might mention, of course, your car has to be sound, it has to be safe, there can be no oil leaks, uh, no fluid of any type coming out. So that's really what that's all about. Okay, uh, they're still going through all that business down there, and uh, Johnny Parsons is trying to steal my microphone. Other than that, let's go to the run of Salt Walther. Earlier today, as we mentioned, this was the backup car. It didn't have that many miles on it, and he ran over 193 miles an hour. Salt Walther, car 77. Second lap complete on this qualifying run. Through the first turn, much the same as before, a little farther off the wall, a little farther away from it, going through the south end that time, about a foot away from it. Through the second turn, onto the back stretch, a one and a half car widths off the wall, halfway down. 46 and 3,800 seconds, still a quick one, very quick. 194.049. Through the north chute, just down to the line in the fourth turn. And here's Salt Walther with the white flag from Pat Vidan staring at him. One lap remaining for David Salt Walther on this qualifying attempt. He had one yesterday in the other number 77 car, close to the south chute wall once again. Just down to the line going through the second turn. Off the second turn and well on his way down the back stretch. Here we go with the time and speed report. 46 and 6,300 seconds, 193.009. We're back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It looks like things are breaking up a little bit down at the start finish line. Apparently, uh, Hurt got out of that car and now Bob Harkey is going to go out for a qualification attempt. You wanted to say something additional about the car that uh, Salt Walter drove today. You have a rather fondness, I would suspect, for that car. Well, yeah, on Salt, I really do. You know, that was a car that I put in the, on the pole here last year that uh, he ended up qualifying with. That was his backup car this year. He felt more comfortable in uh, the other car, his number one car, but that, uh, that was Mario Andretti's car. They had a motor problem and ended up qualifying the car that I qualified on the pole. Interesting story there is, uh, Gene White uh, wanted to buy the, the other car, Mario's car, for uh, Lloyd Ruby to run after the Danny and Gaius thing went through when they had the motor problem. But that didn't work because uh, Salt didn't want to sell the number one car, the car that he was running, because he, he liked it a lot better than the car that I qualified 
last year, it, the one that he ended up qualifying. If you can get that all straight, yes, you I, you're all a better that. man than I am, <laughs> yes. But uh, the other comment, I think the reason Hurt got out of the 42 car is because it did not have an Ole tap handle on the gear shift knob. <laughs> okay, stand by for more reports and one-liners from Tom Sneva from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. If you really want to get results in the Yellow Pages, you really ought to say something in the Yellow Pages. Say something about your hours and location. Say something about your products and service. Say something about your company's reliability. And make sure you say something to your Yellow Pages salesperson. Together, you may create a new arrangement of an old favorite tune. Now, True Value Hardware Stores offer a selection of health and beauty aids for your lawn and garden. Choose quality ortho products like the Lawn Sprayer, Weed Be Gone, or Insect Spray to protect against bugs and ugly weeds. Or choose these True Temper Head Shears or Grass Shears to keep shrubs and grass neatly trimmed. And use this Melnor Garden Sprinkler to gently water a 50-foot circle over your garden. Protect and beautify your lawn and garden with supplies from participating True Value Hardware Stores. When American Fletcher said, Peg, we want to be your bank, I said, then show me a checking account that won't cost me anything to use. And they said that with a combo account, I'd get no service charge checking if I kept $500 in my combo savings, plus a monthly statement that listed all my checks in order. So I said, American Fletcher, you really know how to treat a girl. We want to be your bank. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner, Johnny Rutherford. You can be a winner, too, when you play Burger Chef's exciting and challenging 500 Racing Facts game. Just buy any sandwich, fry, and drink combination, and you'll get a game card that will test your racing knowledge. Boy, I got a tough one. Hey, this is great. I just won. I've got the best one. Who won the 76 500? Be a winner. Play 500 Racing Facts only at Burger Chef. We're back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Before the qualification attempt of Bob Harkey, let's pause five seconds for station identification. Channel 6, Indianapolis, WRTV. Craig Roberts back with Tom Sneva. Tom Carnegie is on the public address system, and we're going to take a look uh, as the yellow light is still on right now, and they're still getting set for Bob Harkey to go out and at least warm up car number 42. That car ought to be nice and warm. He's been out there about 15 times already today. Roger Rager, uh, the rookie driving car number 97, the Dairy Queen Special, went out and ran three fairly decent laps. Now, when I say fairly decent, we now look at the, the slowest speed being 185, and Roger was running in the high 187s, and his crew waved him off on the fourth lap. So about an hour and a half went by, and he came out again, and there's what happened. In three, Roger definitely took that car completely out of commission. And uh, Tom, you talk about a lot of times, you go out and you don't like the run particularly and it's waved off and you say we'll give it another shot and then you come back and do something like that so it can be very costly. It really can you know there's a big mental game going on now as far as uh, what they should or shouldn't do. At that time I thought they did the right thing. I didn't think they were going fast enough to make the show. Now it uh, you know it's looking a little different you know they've uh, they've junk the car basically it's not going to get an attempt at all so they don't have any chance but at that time I think they made the right decision in waving off that speed. Okay as we mentioned we're waiting now for Bob Harkey to get set to go out the pace car has come back in and we anticipate having a green light here very shortly the reason for the yellow about 415 Dick Simon uh, rode the wall on four and uh, and really dumped some oil and some other fluid down so the engine is being started now on car number 42 this uh, car is the car that John Mailer drove in the race last year and I believe it's what about a 72 Eagle certainly it's got to be updated but it looks the same to me as it did the last couple of years yeah I'm not sure how much updating was done on that car over the winter it uh, John put it in the show with a bonsai run late in the afternoon uh, last year so you never know it might happen again well Bob Harkey there's no question of the fact that he is a definite veteran I would like to see him in a uh, perhaps a better car if we could put that more politely here we go Hello. It looks like uh, they're escorting somebody out. Who is that? Is that Herterbees? Well, it's kind of difficult to tell at this point, but I would suggest he is the only one who was causing a commotion down there. Perhaps uh, it is Jim. 
As you pointed out, he's not uh, too bad at getting publicity. Not a bad article in Sports Illustrated. He got three pages more than the World Series last year. So Jimmy does a pretty good job in that direction. As we mentioned, they've got the engine started now in the car, driven by Bob Harkey. We have only 32 cars qualified. We need one more to start to fill the field, and then the bumping will start. Let's pick up the PA and Tom Carnegie. And his crew will go to the north end of the pit area. Everyone behind the yellow line. Now there goes Herdebees out onto the track, trying to hold up this qualification. And certainly for the good of racing, Herdebees is certainly not doing himself any good at all. Well, I think he just has killed all the fan interest in Herdebees over the years by his actions at the moment, trying to hold up qualifications. Now everybody get back. That's everybody get back. Everybody get back. Everybody behind the yellow line. I really don't understand. We've both known Jim for a long time, and I do not at this point understand what he's trying to prove. I'm not sure either. You know, uh, sometimes you get a little bitter about the big business, the high finance it takes to go racing right now, and uh, that's always been a concern of Jim's. And possibly he was on the racetrack. He uh, might have saw some oil, a, a piece of rock, or, uh, you know, something out there he wanted to get off the, the track. But uh, right now I don't understand Jim at all. Okay, let's stay with the action on the track. They're trying to get all the people moved back and uh, get everybody out of the area where the area of the wall, the pit wall, is restricted to two people per car, and there are definitely a lot of people. Jim Hurtaby is now being led away through the Tower Terrace area by some state troopers, and I believe it did take a state trooper to get Jim out of here. Okay, Bob Hardy's going back out again. Let's see if we can finally get that 33rd car in the field. It has been what I thought was going to be a rather non-violent, just kind of easy Sunday. It's not exactly violent, but it's certainly been different. It certainly has. Uh, you know, this has got to add a little bit of uh, confusion or frustration to Harkey, too. You know, he's out there trying to qualify for the biggest race in the world, and to have these kind of distractions when he's got to be pumped up, psyched up to try to get that car up to speed, it's... Uh, you know, it's not exactly ideal conditions for Bob. I can imagine what he thought when he came off four and saw all the people standing out on the track. I, I would have to think that uh, he thought something was very seriously wrong, although I have a feeling he may have known who was on the track. Well, I don't know. If he's like me, you don't usually open your eyes until you get about halfway down the straightaway, so we're lucky we didn't have some kind of an incident that way. For those of you who missed it last week, uh, Tom Sneva, who appeared on the Superstars competition, likened uh, qualifying race cars to swimming. He said it's very, very similar. You close your eyes, you hold your breath, and you jump in. <laughs> it's the name of the game, you know. It's uh, Fortunately, we only have to qualify at Indianapolis once every year. Okay, let's pick up now Tom Carnegie on the public address as we watch, hopefully, the qualification attempt of Bob Harkey of Indianapolis, car number 42. Bob Hartke has been in six Indianapolis events, finished eighth in both 1964 and 1974. He was not in the race in 1977. Last race was 1976. He's driven in 80 championship races. He's 27th on the active USAC driver list member of the champion highway safety team has not participated in a championship event this year here he is moving rather rapidly down now he's stirring up some of the dust from the accident scene as he roars down that straightaway
Harkey picking up speed now. And there he is, splashing out of turn four onto the straightaway. Eyes on starter Pat Vidan, and he's on it. And he's on his run. Let's follow him around, Gary. 47-year-old Bob Harkey right along that inside white line as he rolls through the first corner up to within 18 inches of that outside retaining wall in the short shoot. Already he's through turn number two and heads it down that five-eighths of a mile back straight away. Bob works about two car widths off the outside wall. Now tucks up closer to the concrete as he sets up for turn three. Bob using a lot of racetrack. Once again, that left side of the car below the white line as he rolls through three and into the short chute. And he's off the fourth corner. Top of the straightaway checks with the crew. Pat Fadan has the green flag out. One lap down and three laps to go for the Guarantee Auto Special driven by Bob Harkey. Using the same line, this circuit very close to that outside retaining wall, using a lot of racetrack. Well below the white line over in turn two, past the sweeps and down the back straightaway. Here's the time and speed report. Bob Hartke, first time around 48 and 4400 seconds. 185.797. And Bob negotiates the fourth corner. Down to complete lap number two. Using that same line through that first corner each time around, about six inches below the white line and up very close to that outside retaining wall in the short chute. He's off the second corner and sets her down that straightaway. Here we go, it's a little bit quicker. 48 and 2800 seconds, 186.413 for Bob Heike. And Bob was very low in the third corner that time. In fact, half the width of the race car below that white line. Off of four, once again checking with the crew. And there's the white flag from starter Pat Fadan. One lap to go. And Bob would then become the 33rd qualifier. He is through the short chute, sets her down into turn number two, rolls through that corner. Once again, very low below the white line. And he's halfway around on this final circuit. Here we go with the time and speed report, lap number three. It's still over 186 miles an hour. 48 and 3,500 seconds, 186.143. Obviously, Bob is gonna have to finish this run. Let's bring him in. He works off that fourth corner. He'll check with the signboard, the pit crew. They wave him on. And here's a checkered flag for Bob Harkey. So you have it right there. The, the field, field is filled at 33. And right now, I, we'll have to wait for the four lap uh, time and speed report. But I would suspect that Al Aquasto is now the man on the bubble. I think Bob might have gotten it up over 185.6. Tom, you got Dick Simon here. Dick, fortunately, you're not hurt or anything. Dick uh, had a little incident earlier in, uh, in the backup car, actually, a car that uh, Bill Pewdiepie was going to drive last year. You're helping Janet Guthrie out this year. You were trying to get Bill uh, sorted out a little bit with that other car. Yes, Tom. Actually, uh, this year we had a little bit of an advantage in working on my own black car first, and the rain kind of delayed things. We were anticipating helping Bill earlier. As it was, we didn't get started until yesterday, and unfortunately, the chat he needed a little more. I overdrove the chassis, what happened. I was too anxious and lost control, Tom, and ran into the wall. And I think the track just needs to be widened a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was waiting to get the time and speed report on Bob Harkey. And the speed average for Bob Harkey, who now moves to the number two position behind Al LaQuesto on the bump list, the speed average Bob Harkey. 186 so there you have it. Al is now the man on the bubble in 33rd position. So Bob Harkey is number two on the bump list. We'll be back with more live reports from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after these messages. When American Fletcher said, Helen, 
We want to be your bank. I said, fine. But first, tell me what you're going to do for me. And they said they could help me plan for the future with seven different savings programs. Then when my needs change, they could change my savings plan, too. So I said, American Fletcher, we've got a great future together. We want to be your bank. If your business requires Yellow Pages advertising in more than one city, buying all that space is now stacked in your favor. Because without leaving town, you can place your Yellow Pages ad in over 150 out-of-town Yellow Pages directories. We call it total market coverage. And the only person you have to talk to is your Indiana Bell Yellow Pages salesperson, the same professional who helps you say something in your local Yellow Pages. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner, Johnny Rutherford. You can be a winner, too, when you play Burger Chef's exciting and challenging 500 Racing Facts game. Just buy any sandwich, fry, and drink combination, and you'll get a game card that will test your racing knowledge. Boy, I got a tough one. Hey, this is great. I just won. I've got the best one. Who won the 76 500? Be a winner. Play 500 racing facts only at Burger Chef. Hi, I'm Pat Summerall. For a selection of values for your lawn, garden, and home, pick up True Value Hardware Store's spring and summer catalog. Choose trash bags in the 44 quart or 26 gallon size for just 77 cents a pack. This rugged 27 gallon garbage can takes rough handling and temperature extremes and it's just $8.99. And the Tylo entry lock set with a dead latch feature is only $5.99. Get these values at participating True Value hardware store. We're back live, Craig Roberts along with Tom Steven, our partner Tom Carnegie working the PA. Bob Harkey just qualified. Larry Rice now is out on the course warming up car number 35. Larry, the rookie driving the Bryant and WIBC special. Tom? Well, just a little bit uh, about Bob Harkey. You know, we're sort of teammates actually. We both work for the uh, Champion Spark Plug Company's Highway Safety Program, and this is a program where they take race drivers and send them all over the nation to talk to high school kids about defensive driving and safe driving and relating driving on the highway to driving on the racetrack. And there's a lot of similarities that way. And, and uh, you know, it's a great program champions had for like 21 years now. So, uh, you know, I hope my teammate Bob uh, stays in the race with that speed. Okay, you got a 186.1, which uh, the speed to beat right now, Al Acosta, 185.6. And Bob Harkey would be second on the bump list. Larry Rice going right past the start finish line right now. The best run of the day this Sunday, which turned out to be the second and only day of qualifying because of the rain out last week, and A.J. Foyt running in excess of 200 miles per hour. And he had a very nice ride. And also his partner, George Snyder, Ziggy had a nice ride over 193. He really did. You know, Ziggy did a good job. He's, uh, you know, he's a good driver, and he helps A.J. out quite a bit. And A.J., uh, you know, gave him a chance uh, or paid him back a little bit for all the work that Ziggy does with him. Uh, Ziggy builds a lot of the parts and pieces for those race cars. He's a great craftsman as well as being a good uh, race driver. This is the last time you and I are going to work together for a while, and I wanted to ask you something, and this may be a dumb question, but when you're running 200 miles an hour or, or you're running 190 or whatever, are you able to see anything? From the cockpit, I mean, are you, are you are you able to pick up different parts on the, perhaps in the stands? I know you guys don't concentrate that hard. I see you looking around every once in a while. I've always wondered what you're looking at. Well, every once in a while, I see a good-looking blonde, but if they're I knew you were going to say if that. they're more than ten rows up, it makes it real difficult at 200 miles an hour. Boy, am I glad I'm not going to be working with you much longer. Okay, here we go, Larry Rice getting up to speed. Let's pick up Tom Carnegie on the public address. And Tom Bagley, Larry Rice hoping to be the fourth rookie in the field of 33. Again, shooting for the mark of Al Acosta. Let's repeat it for you. 185.624 miles an hour. Bob Harkey, who qualified in the 33rd starting position a while ago, or rather the 33rd qualifier, would be next on the bump list with the 186.133 mark. So far, there are three cars or rather one car in the 185 mile an hour bracket and two in the 186. Eyes on Pat Vadan and Larry Rice is on the run. Let's follow him around. And the farmer school teacher from Linden, Indiana riding a little high through that first corner. Well off that white line, plenty of cushion between the car and the outside retaining wall on the short shoot. Rides smoothly through the second corner and sets her down that long back straightaway. 
Larry with some four car widths between his position and the wall. Now he closes up against the wall as he sets up for turn number three. Lower through the corner this time, just below the white line. Negotiates the short shoot at the north into the speedway and sets her into turn number four. And now we have him off the corner, down the long front straightaway to complete lap number one. Larry, of course, gained substantial recognition for winning the dirt title last year. A former USAC midget champion as well. Rides nicely through the short shoot. Very smooth through turn two. Off that corner and down the back straightaway on lap number two. Let's take a look at the time and speed report. Lap number one, 48 and 1100 seconds. And it's fast enough for Larry Rice. 187.071. It's good enough. And of course, Larry right now must be thinking about that new power plant riding behind him. Two laps down and two laps to go. Once again, just off that white line as he rolls through the first corner. A little closer to the outside retaining wall that time around. Smoothly through the second corner, past the sweets, and sets her on the backstretch. And almost the same, second time around, still fast enough. 48 and 1700 seconds, 186.838 miles an hour. He's gonna be in there if he keeps it up. And we have him off the fourth corner, Tom. Looking for the white flag this time around. Checks with the crew. They give him the speed. And that should build his confidence somewhat. One lap to go for Larry Rice. Same line through the corner, just off the white line. The last two circuits, he's been closer to the outside retaining wall using more racetrack than the first two laps. Off the second corner and approaching the halfway mark of his final circuit. Here it is, hey, and it's quicker, his best lap. Almost 188 miles an hour, 47 and 9,200 seconds, 187.813, bring him to the checkered flag. Just off the white line as he negotiates the fourth corner, and he's gotta have a smile from ear to ear beneath that Bell Star helmet. There's the checkered flag for Larry Rice. Okay, so Al Aquasto has been bumped from the field at this point, and Bob Harkey is now on the bubble. We'll be back with more from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after these messages. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner Johnny Rutherford. We're back live now at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and Joe Saldana in car number 69 has gone out to try a qualification effort. We might mention again the man on the bubble now is Bob Harkey and the speed to beat 186.133 miles per hour. The PA system right now interviewing Larry Rice. Larry's a former school teacher, and I think Tom Sneva also having been a former school teacher. Did you manage to talk him out of the business? Well, I, uh, I don't know why he left the business. There's rumors around why I left. You know, it was really a case where the superintendent I was working with kept getting very upset at me, almost emotionally disturbed, because I kept sending thank you notes home to the students that would stay home from school. And uh, he, just, he just couldn't understand that at all. I know you did several wheelies with a school bus, and they weren't, they weren't too pleased with that either. Well, yeah, it was a lot easier with the 44 passenger than the 60 passenger school bus, but uh, they were both uh, handled better than the guy would think. Mm -hmm. You had a wing on the on the 60 passenger, didn't you? No, they outlawed the wing early, you know, they wouldn't let me run the wing, but uh, I could run dual tires in the rear, so that worked out pretty good. Okay, let's pick up the PA right now and listen to some of the interview with Larry Rice as Joe Saldana gets set to make a qualification attempt. That's all there was left. Larry, you are fifth on the bump list. Yeah, that ought to make you feel secure. Well, uh, with no more time than's left, I sure hope it makes it because, uh, you know, it, it's something I've wanted all my life. And I have to thank one more person, my wife. Uh, she's put up with me all month long, and that's been a chore, I'll tell you. One of your crewmen said, a long time coming, time you made it. Yeah, it's, it sure has been. I've been racing for 10 years. Uh, I've won a couple of national championships, but it just didn't seem to make any difference. But uh, this year, Phil Headback and WIBC came along with us. 
gave us a little sponsorship money, and it made all the difference in the world, and I really want to thank him. Larry, ladies and gentlemen, a very appreciative man, uh, just overcome, emotionally strained at this time, a very humble person, and there are some tears in his eyes. He's really proud and very happy to have made this 500, the first one. Let him hear your thanks and your appreciation. Larry Rice, that's for you. Meanwhile, we wonder who the AMI Award will go to, that presented by Hoosier Colon Oil of Indianapolis, a check for $2,000 to the person left standing in line when qualifications close at 6 o'clock. That award presentation will happen. Joe Saldana going out now in car number 69. This is Craig Roberts back near the start finish line with Tom Sneva. Uh, this is the Hoffman Racing Car, and uh, I'm not sure all this month they've really got much out of this machine. I, I think they may have been practicing up into the w upper 180s, and that's all he needs to do today. That's true. Uh, he was up close to 190, I think, the last couple of days. Now, I don't know if they've lost that speed or what. I talked to Bobby Unser just, uh, you know, maybe a half hour ago. He was doing uh, carburation tests for the race with a uh, car he's already qualified, and he said the track was in really good condition. He said earlier it was a little greasy, but now uh, he thinks the track is in just about perfect condition. Well, it's nice and cool. There's no question about that. Joe is getting up uh, some pretty good speed on the practice lap as we follow him around the track. So we mentioned the man on the bubble right now is Bob Harkey in the speed to beat 186.133. Al Laquasto has been bumped. And actually, Larry Rice with that run, uh, I did not hear the time and speed report, but I believe it was over 187 miles per hour. And I think he's now fifth on the bump list, so he's in pretty good shape with uh, about 34 minutes left to go. Larry's looking real good. Bob Harkey, I would say, is in trouble. I'm not sure how many cars are in line right now, but uh, the track is getting better. It's cooling down, and so these cars that maybe are running 185 earlier can run 187, 188 right now. I'm looking at the scoring pylon right now, and I, I know your brother uh, looks like 31st position right now, so Jerry in car number 30 uh, has got to be squirming a little bit, too. Yeah, I'm sure he's out here. And Okay, let's pick up the run of Joe Saldana, and then Tom and I will talk about Brother Jerry after this is completed. Through turn number one nicely and not quite as close to that outside retaining wall as Larry Rice ran the earlier run off the second corner and sets her down that back straightaway. Halfway around on lap number one, working some two car whiffs off the outside retaining wall tucks up against the concrete as he sets up for turn number three and rolls nicely through the corner. Negotiates the short shoot and sets her down into turn number four. And we have him off the corner, the top of the main straightaway, checking with the crew. One lap down and three laps to go for little Joe Saldana. Same line through that first corner, just off the white line. Already open to turn number two. Off that corner and negotiates that five eighths of a mile back straight away. Here it is, and it's plenty good enough. Listen to this over 189 miles an hour, almost 190. 47 and 3,700 seconds. 189.994. Giving it a heart stopping ride as he heads for turn number one. Right in that groove, just off the white line once again, not using quite as much racetrack as he could, but apparently he feels comfortable in that line as he works through turn number two. In front of the sweeps, off the corner, and now sets her down that straightaway. Once again, working some two car whiffs off the outside retaining wall, halfway around. And it's much faster, over 190 miles an hour. 47 and 1700 seconds, 190.799, and he's moving. Comes off the fourth corner, checks with the crew. And the adrenaline must be pumping in little Joe's system as he takes the white flag. One lap to go, this time a bit higher through that first corner. Works off the turn up against that concrete wall, nicely into two. Once again, a little high as he
he works off the corner and sets her down the back straightaway. Just over one half. We're back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as Joe Saldana will bump Bob Harkey from the field, and he is really running. He's running well over 190. The crew's going bananas. We have to leave. Tom Steve, best wishes, and I hope you get that checkered flag next Sunday. Thank you, Craig. We think we got a good shot for him. Thank you very much. Goodbye from Indianapolis. Come on, there's a checkered flag, and Joe Saldana will be in the field with an impressive four lap average. Very, very impressive. The number three corner. Today's telecast of the Channel 6 qualification trials for the 1978 500 mile race was brought to you by American Fletcher National Bank. At American Fletcher, we want to be your bank. By True Value Hardware. By the Bell System Yellow Pages. And by Burger Chef Systems of Central Indiana.